Oh, I think now is a great time to classify numbers. We talked about real numbers. Um, we haven't actually sp explicitly talked about rational or irrational, integers, whole, or natural, but we did expose you to imaginary numbers with the square root. There's a brief, very brief introduction into it, but you don't really need all that jazz in order to be able to classify numbers properly. And I think in order to classify numbers properly, it's actually best to start from down up. And then kind of explain the story that I use. And I use a lot more stories in the classroom. I'm considering using some on videotape, but with the videotape, it's just about getting to the lesson, doing the example as quickly as possible, so that you have uh, more time to be able to do your work in an efficient manner. So natural numbers are numbers that you can divide, or you can divide in a denominator, put in a denominator. Uh, theoretically speaking, you cannot divide by any number that's negative or zero or a decimal or a square root or a fraction. And I remember talking to somebody who said, oh, no, you can do that. Well, no, you can't. And I, the very simple reason for that is this. I mean, I, I suppose when people were first dividing numbers is if you were dividing um, supplies or anything amongst people, you would always consider a person as, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. You would never partition a person as, you know, like, oh, 2.5 people, etc. So the main application of division was giving or partitioning or, uh, well, that's about it, giving stuff away to people. So let's go start with natural numbers. Your natural numbers include these numbers. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc. or etc. pardon me. Uh, not zero, not negative, not fraction, not decimal. I suppose one can make an argument about fraction, you know, 4 over 2 is 2. Well, a reduced fraction, etc. So 1, 2, 3, 4, all those good numbers are natural numbers. Whole numbers are like natural numbers except with one difference. And here's my cute way of showing it. And I think students really remember it when I show it this way. What does the O look like? What does the L look like? What does the uh, E look like? What does the W look like? What does the 4 look like if you kind of translate and flip and rotate and reflect them? Zero, one, two, three, four, and it goes on. So it's just like natural numbers except it includes the number zero. And that was it. You know, that looks like a zero, one, two, three, and four. Integers are very similar to whole numbers and natural numbers, with an exception. I don't see the difference yet. Not yet, but they also include negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and so on. So it's just like whole numbers, except now they have the negative natural numbers, too. I suppose that statement in itself is contradictory, but that's basically where I'm getting. So it's like whole numbers and natural numbers, except it also includes rational. I'm sorry, uh, natural. Rational numbers are numbers that are any of these types of numbers and including, they can be fractions, but they're fractions written as uh, integer over an integer. So for instance, 22 over 7, and some of you might be plugging that into your calculator right now, is actually a natural number, excuse me, a rational number because it's an integer over an integer. Some people would say, it does, it, oh, that doesn't repeat. It does repeat, uh, maybe after 100 digits, but it still repeats. Uh, any number that terminates, any number that has an ending, or any number that, uh, if it doesn't have an ending, has a uh, repeating pattern. Not a pattern, a repeating pattern. So, for instance, 1.33333 with a line over it, the line means that it just goes on forever. That's also a rational number. All of these are also rational numbers. Um, I'll show you an irrational number. Our irrational number is a number like pi, 3.1415. I don't remember what the rest is. I used to remember it to like 20 numbers. And then I just, if you don't practice it, you forget. It, it's really that simple. Uh, here's another number that a lot of students might not think is irrational. They say, oh, it repeats, but it doesn't. 1.2345. And you know what the next numbers are going to be, but they're never going to repeat. It's going to go 6, 7, 8, 9, 
one zero one 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 two one three one four one five one six one seven one eight one nine two zero two one two two. So there's no repeating number. It doesn't go five one eight five one eight five one eight or three 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 three. These are examples of irrational numbers. Another example of an irrational number is the square root of two. You can't split it. Uh, there's no number times itself exactly that equals that. So that's an example of an irrational number. And the story that I use is this. Uh, real number had two kids. Everything here is a real number. Everything included is a real number. Uh, he had rational and irrational. And irrational in his way, and he was crazy, and uh, nobody wanted him. But rational number, you know, everybody loved him. In fact, he had a kid. His kid was an integer. An integer had a kid. His kid was a whole number, and you know, a whole number had a kid, and named him natural. So it goes that way. Uh, besides real numbers, there's actually something called imaginary numbers. And imaginary numbers you don't see too often, but we did do a little bit, very little. But the square root of a negative number would be an example of an imaginary number. If it says, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, actually. The square root of a negative number, a fourth root of a negative number, sixth root. But maybe I'm getting a little too ambitious there. So I'll just say the square root of a negative number is an example of an imaginary number. That's an exposure to a um, set of definitions of real numbers and imaginary numbers, too. It's a classification. It's more memorization than anything else. When you do it on your test and quiz, your teacher usually doesn't repeat that concept. But it's nice to know what you're talking about. You know, if you look at directions and it says, add the integers, well, what exactly is an integer? They're right here. You know, add two numbers that are in this set, you know, this group. Well, other than that, that's pretty much it for now. Have a great day. Goodbye.